This is my role. My eyes are on the speaker. Tell me why. Because <laughs> that looks fantastic. Pass, would you like to come and line up over here? It's day one of a new school year at the Meadows Primary School in Lincoln. One behind the other. How is former Teacher of the Year, Andy Bell, going to get his new Year 6 class into shape? OK, boys and girls, listen ever so carefully, and I'd like you to put your coat on your peg, your lunchbox on the top, and anything else that you might have on the bench. And then when you get into the classroom, your book is in one of the places. And you need to find your book and sit down quietly, and I'll tell you what we're going to do. Where are we going to put our lunch boxes? On the top. On the top. And what are we going to do after we've done that? Go sit down and find your book. Fantastic. And we're walking in smartly. Follow me. Andy's invited John Bailey to see him at work. Would anybody like to have a guess and tell me how you think I was feeling today when I came into school? Well done. It's nice to see you boys listening so well. Josh. Excited. I felt a little bit excited. Yes, I did, Josh. Well done. How else do you sometimes feel? Cameron? Nervous. Nervous. Do you know what? That was the first word that came to my mind. Thank you for putting your hand up and waiting. That was great. So excited and nervous. They're a bit different, aren't they? Excited is usually a really good thing, and nervous is sometimes not a good thing. Give me a secret thumbs up if you felt nervous this morning, even if it was just a tiny bit. Thank you for being really honest. What's your objective when you're sharing your feelings with them? First of all, to get them to the position where they feel able to talk openly about something that might be going on inside. And that might not always be about feelings, but in the future it might be that I want them to be honest about something or to, to tell the truth. So I think really it's to... And also it's to show them what I'm like. Good morning, Monica. Good morning. How are you today? OK. Good. I'm pleased about that. Morning, Chloe. Morning, Mr. Bell. Thank you, and you too. How are you feeling? Nervous. Nervous. That's OK. We've talked about that word. Good morning, Anisha. Good morning. How are you? Um, excited. Excited. Great. So when you're calling the register, you ask yeah. children how they are? Yes. And you take their answers seriously? Yes. And I try and look at them as well so that they know that I am interested and that I will take on board what they say. And if somebody says they're not OK, then I know that the way that I deal with them that day will need to be different. First activity this morning to get us thinking. Make a list of ten things that your character might want to bring to school on the first day. If you're really stuck, you could just do yourself. But I want you to be ready to tell somebody why you chose those things. OK, now tell me what this exercise is going to be about. Just a bit of fun to start with leading towards the idea that there are things that we bring with us every day and they're important. OK, what's the answer to the question if someone says, look, they're year six, they, 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 they know all this? Your reply would be... They need to be reminded constantly. Mm. Stink bombs. Not a good idea, <laughs> but I think he probably would want to bring them. And number three, the skateboard, I think that might be how he got to school. Oh, I like the way you've done your list, Cameron. Cos you've drawn yours instead, haven't you? I think that would be my first choice if I was him as well. Yeah, and what's this? Football. I think he would enjoy that. And what about number five? Pencil case. A pencil case. Because they've had a big break. I'm a different person as well, and some of them might think that what I do is different to the last teacher. Um, so no matter how old they are, I think they still need exactly the same as, as you would expect when you first start. Having got the children settled, Andy raises the issue of sound levels. The football is on silent. How do you think we ought to be working when we're learning about this together? What should we be doing? Should we be talking a lot? Should we be talking a little bit? Do we need to be talking? If I put it up here... Do you think there would be anything on your pages at the end of 15 or 20 yeah. minutes? Yeah. 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 Oh, who said it depends? It does depend. It does depend on the kind of learner that you are, because some people can talk a lot and still get things done. But I'm going to make the choice for you this morning, because it's the beginning of term. I'm going to put it just above. This says, on your own, no nattering. That's great. So just talk me through your noise level system. 
Okay, um, it's it's almost like sometimes I call it a noiseometer. Yes. Uh, silence at the bottom. The next step up uh, is on your own, and then in brackets it says no nattering. So the idea is that you're doing something on your own. You might need to talk to somebody, but it shouldn't just be general chit chat. Um, then it says partner talk, where they're doing an activity which will involve talking on a more general level, and then team talk, which is maybe where they're working in a group or collaboratively. So um, that just gives them an idea of what, what the atmosphere should be like and what it should sound like in the room. Excellent. I, I think that's absolutely exemplary. And I'm, I'm very pleased to see it as well, because children need to be talking more than teachers in, in rooms. Yes. If you hear this... It means it's what? It means it's raining. But it also means something else. And I think you're all very clever because Matthew and Daniel did something when they heard it and they didn't even know what I was going to say. What do you think it means, Chloe? Stop what you're doing. It means stop what you're doing because I'd like to talk to you. And what I always do is I always look for those people who do it straight away. Because if you stop and you look and you listen, then I'll be really, really pleased. We won't waste any time. We're able to get started. I'd heard about the idea of using a rain stick, so I thought if I introduced a really different sound that was really calm and very different to what else was happening, it would instantly be recognisable and it would just be a nice, calm way of bringing them together. Brilliant. One of the things that I notice is that very early on you've got a repertoire because you, you do point out to them that sometimes you won't need it, you might just hold your hand up. Well done. You can see some hands up, well done. That time, just use my hand. Everybody was ready. Fantastic. If you see me with my hand up, put your hand up. We'll see how quickly we can be ready. Courtney, we're looking. OK, we'll talk to you in a second. OK, a couple of things to show you this morning. First of all, all the way through the day, I'm going to be looking carefully for people each session of the day who I think really do their learning in the best way. It might be because you are really concentrating. It might be because you do your best. It might be because you listen really well to your partner. But I have some good work tickets here and I will write your name on it and I'll write why. And on this side, there's a little ticket and then we're going to put it in the Homer Simpson tin. And at the end of the week, I will draw two or maybe three of these out for a special prize. And it's not just for people who get everything right, it's for people who try their best in their learning, OK? Just freeze that picture mm. there. <laughs> Let no one out there believe that they're too old for <laughs> tangible rewards. No, absolutely. Uh, Homer Simpson and the tickets and the tin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bamaloo, that's going in big time, isn't it? <laughs> this is if you do something that is just absolutely amazing. If you get one of these, that is extra special. Why do we give children tangible rewards? Well, I think you constantly need encouragement um, in order to want to take the next step. Some children find things very difficult, and I think if they know that when I've reached this step, somebody's noticed and they've said, well done, you've done a good job, it gives you that incentive to keep going. All those stickers, they end up on magnets on the fridges, yeah. they end up in shoe boxes, yes. they get saved for uncles and aunts to Definitely. see them. They're an incredibly powerful motivator. They are. Give me five, just show me five. Five. Next, the rules for listening. Now, give me five is also a way that we remember how it's really good to sit when we're listening and working and learning as a class together. And if I say give me five, then there are five things that we need to do. Number one means I'm keeping my hands to myself. Now, if you're sitting next to someone whose hands are wandering all over, it can distract you. So we keep our hands to ourselves. OK. Number two says my feet are still. If you're sitting on the carpet, if you're sitting at the table, it helps us to concentrate if we're not moving them all over the place and making a noise. Number three says I'm silent and there's a funny picture with a mouth that's a zip. OK. There are some times in the day when we need to be silent because everybody needs to hear what's going on. So that's number three. Number four says, my eyes are on the speaker. It's really polite if someone's talking to look at them. Because if, if I'm having a conversation with someone and they're doing this, I don't think they're interested. 
And number five, funny picture of a dog. My mind's ready. That means when we get to five, we're all ready to learn. And I shouldn't need to go back and say, oh, number two, number one, someone's forgetting. OK. So if I say give me five, that's what we do. You're now being very explicit. Yeah. I can mm. see the value of, of, of making sure that absolutely everybody in the room is clear about it. Mm. Um, is that right? Is that what you're doing? You're make, leaving no room yes. for chance? Yes, it is. It sounds very specific and very strict, but I think it helps to be really, really clear so there's no room for argument that this is how we need to do it. Finally, it's time to start thinking about the class rules. OK, so I want you to talk with your partners about what kind of things in a good class do you think the teacher does? OK, wow. you might tell me about the way the teacher listens, the way the teacher explains things, the things the teacher maybe doesn't do. The next one says, I'd like the children in my class to do these things. OK, so that will be a list of the way that you think the children in your class should behave. Number one. Okay. Thank you, good boy. Underneath it says, I'd like the day to include. What kind of things do you think in our school day help us to learn really well? Can you talk to me about what, what's going what's to be happening over, the next, over this next period? Yes, the children are going to spend a little bit of time working in groups to talk about the type of class that they'd like to belong to, really without me ever mentioning rules or routines. And don't be mean. What's, what's being mean? What kind of things? Like calling people names. OK, so violent or vicious, calling somebody names. Or vandalism. OK. And then, at a later date, we'll come back to that and look at it in a bit more detail and then maybe share the things that are common to all of them and then bring them out one by one and then say, you know, if we want our class to be like this, how are we going to achieve it? So then to ask them questions about how we can get there and then they form the basis for the rules. And you want them involved in it because? I want them to take ownership of it and also to see why we have them in the first place. So I think if they've been part of it, then they'll understand the reason rather than me saying, this is what we're doing and it's my choice. Two weeks on, John checks how Andy's rules and routines are coming together. Well done. Three, and two, and one. I'm ready. OK. My first success star this morning is Monica. Monica, I've been watching. You've been listening so well. I'm going to put your name up here later. Three. And two. And one. Sam, I've got a smiley face here which is on its way to you and Loretta. You appear to be teaching effortlessly. Um, but all the things that we talked about, I can see. You've just given a child a gold achievement star yeah. or a pair of children. Yeah. The football's there. Is it a job done in terms of uh, managing their behaviour? I always make a point of continually just doing the same thing and keep reinforcing it. And through the year, I'll maybe change things slightly, do things in a slightly different way just to so they don't get bored with things. But, um, yeah, I'm quite happy with how it's working at the moment.